Welcome to Food Truck Simulator. Now, a couple of months ago, we covered Gas Station Simulator, which was a hell of an experience. Well, now the same people that made that decided it's time to see what a food truck life is like. And you know I've got to see that for myself. So today, we're going to be flipping burgers, serving some pretty demanding customers, and of course, grinding all 50 achievements that this game has to offer. How will it compare to their previous sim game, as that absolutely chucked achievements at you every chance that it got? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's get straight into it. Welcome to the Achievement Grind. The game starts with a beautiful look over the city that we will be supplying to, Westside Port and all of its many diverse districts. Our character is looking over his dad's food truck book to try and get us back on our feet. Our dad unfortunately passed away and we want to follow in his footsteps and be the best food server in the port. But our van's a mess, first port of call is to sort that out. With a fresh lick of paint, a beautiful new layout and mending all of the broken appliances in the back, we're ready to set off. We look back to the book for advice and realise, of course, we need to get products to sell. Customers are going to want to pay for some five star air. We then get a call from Clara. Clara is a family friend and she is here to help. Funnily enough, she also owns the local shop in which we need to grab those supplies. So we fill our boots for free and go to pick it up. Now the driving is a touch janky in this game, I can't lie, but it is something that we definitely get more used to as the game goes on. And within moments, we are at Clara's ready to pick up our shopping. And here we also pick up the first achievement, Ariba, for getting there so fast we get a discount. But now with a bag full of burgers, it's time to go to our first selling point and serve some hopefully hungry locals. We open the hatch and get to our next achievement as well for learning how to make burgers, even though we haven't done that just yet, for suns out, buns out. But Clara is here to guide us through it all, the order menu, adding gas to get the appliances working, and even how to chop and cook the food. A couple of seconds later and a couple of finishing tomatoes, our first burger is complete. We pack it, sell it, and get our next achievement as well, steady debut, for serving our first client. And we're off. So now it's time to crack on ourselves and to serve the hungry horde that no doubt will appear. And by serving another tomato burger at lightning McQueen speeds, we also unlock our next achievement, easy money. And we carry on serving the finest beggars that money can buy and the day soon quickly comes to a close. When it does, you guessed it, more achievements. For prestiging to level 1 we unlock Greenhorn and we also unlocked Kitchen Veteran, which I know was a bug as for this achievement we need to cook at selling spots 50 different times, which we obviously haven't done. However, A, nothing I can do about it now, and B, we would have unlocked it anyway by going through so I'm not too fussed, although it is a bit odd. We also unlock some new places to sell and some new appliances. The next place we have to cook out is outside of a nightclub but they're a fan of fries, something that we don't have yet, so we need to correct that. We head back to our garage and fix up our food truck some more. We add some new mirrors, a burger on top, and some fancy spooky headlights for another achievement, Pimp My Food Truck. But more importantly, we also add a freezer, a pizza oven, and a fryer to sort out that chip dilemma. And yes, I'm British, so we call them chips, dope at me for it. But after picking up some more shopping, surprisingly, we get yet another achievement, and this one was for accidentally running over a civilian. Unlocking us nice to meet you, which honestly was hilarious, and since there's two more achievements related to running folks over, thankfully we'll be doing quite a bit of that as well. But for now, it's time to save some drunk assholes, so to the nightclub we go. We rock up and set up our new fryer, it's pretty simple, you add the oil, you add the chip, you fry the chip and serve the chip, you know, it's fries, it's not rocket science. But now the rush starts and we need to start serving burgers and chips at a decent rate. Now I will say something about this game is that it can be quite daunting to have to cook and prepare things at the same time just for one order. But I will also say that the pacing is pretty good in introducing you to all of the new foods that you're going to be cooking, so that you don't get overwhelmed too soon. So yeah, a really nice positive that I was pleased about. Now, speaking of pleased, during the rush, I accidentally served a premium cheeseburger. But unfortunately, it wasn't that premium, as even though it was exactly what they wanted and we served it long before they got bored of waiting, apparently, it was a bad burger. We are rewarded, of course, with another achievement though, simply called It Happens. However, this setback didn't stop me and I I was soon back on form. Many burgers and fries later, the day was done and the rush was over. We also unlock our next Rebecca Black related achievement, as by learning how to cook chips, we also unlocked It's Friday Friday. Time to head back to the garage and sleep after a good solid first day on the job. But what's this? We awake to find a disgusting pus-filled bubo vandalising our van. I mean, not ideal I guess, but it could be- 
what a dick. But now we have the benefit of putting out this entire fire, whilst also saving the journal and escaping with our life thanks to this guy. Thankfully, we managed to do just that though, and escape in the nick of time before passing out on the floor. Cut to a few days later, and the garage is totally destroyed. So destroyed, in fact, that we unlock an achievement for it called Man on Fire, and we've lost the van. However, Clara is kind enough to help us restore the garage to what it once was, and we soon use the computer to clean and get the garage back to a satisfactory standard. And guess what? This also unlocks us a new achievement as well. Fixing the entire place unlocked us, can we fix it? But with no van and no options, Clara tells us that we do have options, and we can do something that will earn us a little bit of money. And right on cue, a man called Luciano calls us and offers us a job tending to his pizza van to help us get a little bit of money together, which of course is lovely, and we of course accept. Now it's time to learn how to make proper, authentic Italian pizzas. It's fairly simple as all the other food items we make are. We stretch the dough, we add some tomato sauce, throw some toppings on top and throw it into the oven. I don't need to explain how a pizza is made, I'm sure you're all aware. But it is something we can definitely do alongside burgers and fries when we get back on our feet. And also, by starting this job, we unlocked Prestige Level 2, which unlocks us another achievement, Serious Player. And of course, we're just a natural at serving pizza. And by serving said fine pizza, we also unlock another achievement for completing 10 orders on one selling spot for Perfect Spot. But that's not all. With the busy day done and with several pizza-hungry people having been fed, our next achievement is for completing the job for Luciano without making a single mistake unlocking us the boss's proud. And because that's not enough achievements, we also unlock our next one for learning how to make pizza at all and we unlock another one bites the crust. Now we must have done a pretty amazing job as when we get back to the garage Luciano decides to give us a brand new truck. We pick it, re-add the stickers and interior and like that we're back on the road. But before that it's time for some revenge. The ass bandit that set our shop on fire was Dennis. Now Dennis is another food truck owner who is jealous of all of our incredible success on the first day. So now it's time to repay the favour. We break into his garage rather easily and use a screwdriver we find to slash all four of his tyres, because of course I'm not going to outright kill him, I'm not a maniac. But what I am going to do is outright rob him though, because once we're done ruining his tyres, we break into his office and hack his safe. Once open, we see a wad of 500 beautiful dollars and of course take it. We then run away, hop the fence, unlocking the achievement Begler for taking the money. This is also where we find out that Clara is actually a superhero, as for some reason, the second we're back in the van, she calls us up and says that I know what you did, the freaky bitch. But enough nattering, it's time to cook some more food. So when we set off on the next day to carry on creating food, for reaching prestige level 2 we also unlock the next section of the map, the Italian district also unlocking the achievement Italian job. For now we must head to another new section though, the business section to do a full day's work there. For now it's more of the same, cooking the most gourmet burgers that we can muster and making sure that people are served in a timely manner. We do another fantastic job and make no mistakes, unlocking us another achievement for serving 20 meals in a row without messing up once, unlocking the law of saving. Series. And we also have one more, by getting the maximum amount of products from chopping up 25 different types of food, we also unlock effective and impressive, but we end on another very productive day. When we leave the business park as well, Clara says that she has a new job available for us, and it's easy as hell, we simply have to pick up a delivery and bring it to her. The first job takes only a minute or two, and when we complete it, surprise surprise, we get another achievement for completing the delivery with more than 30 seconds left, unlocking race driver, even though for this achievement you probably have to go out of your way to not get it. Oh, and earlier when I said that I have to run people over for a couple more achievements, we actually get the next one here as well for running 50 people over for meats back on the menu. And yes, I went out of my way to hit people constantly, and since we've still got one more related, we're not stopping anytime soon. We are then tasked with heading over to Luciano's shop to buy some products from him directly. And you'll never guess what, when we find him, we unlock yet another achievement for using his shop, unlocking Godfather. We fill our shelves and head back off, and we head straight into our next achievement as as well, so yeah, I guess this game really throws them at you just as much as Gas Station Simulator did. As when we reach the top of this hill and look at the statue of a man holding a hot dog, we unlock the achievement, The Great Hot Dog. No idea why, but <laughs> I'm not complaining. You know how it goes by now folks, we rock up to a new selling point and make the finest pizzas and fries that the city has ever seen, making little mistakes and making sure we provide the speediest service. And it doesn't take long for the day to be over and for us to carry on with missions. Now, apparently all of the simulation games that the company create are all within the same universe, a sort of Drago Entertainment cinematic universe, if you will. So by playing one game, it could affect some things about the others. Well, I think I found the link in this game, as when we head back to the garage, we unlock our third and final extra job. 
and it is to clean a gas station, and the owner, Joe, wears an apron with the gas station simulator logo on it. Here we have to simply power wash all of the oil, simple as, and it gives me great pleasure in saying that unlike gas station simulator, the power wash doesn't absolutely fry my PC, and this also is a very easy job to do as well, as in a minute or two we have cleaned it from head to toe. We finish, Joe is happy, and we unlock our next achievement employee of the month. For now though, it's back to cooking and serving food. We start selling at a new point in the marina. Here, pizza and fries are the most popular, which is great because they're two of the easiest things to cook. So we broke no sweat in delivering the orders. We do a great job and finish soon to head to the next selling point, serving the workforce at a local shipping yard. Again, nothing really to note here other than us getting our next achievement for serving 50 customers total, unlocking gathering the fan base. When we finish the final sell as well, we also unlock prestige level 3, and our next achievement, local hero. And I feel like we are making some lovely progress now. But on the dawn of the new day, it's time to learn a new food type, as a master known as Mr. Hurricane wants to teach us how to make sushi. We travel immediately to the Asian district to learn from the master himself. When we enter the district, we unlock the achievement Rush Hour for unlocking the Asian section. We then find a shop, and Mr. Hurricane gives us a generic dialogue about knowing our dad, so he feels like it's his obligation to teach us too. When we buy some sushi-related products from him, we unlock yet another achievement, Windy Day, for using his supply store. So we buy some new products and head to our selling point to learn how to make sushi. Now, admittedly, sushi took a lot of getting used to. It's quite complicated compared to the other foods, and the tutorial isn't really the best at explaining what to do here. So it did take us a little while and a couple of fails to understand how to do it perfectly. I personally think that this minigame could have been easier to create, but once you get to know how it's done, it isn't too bad. We eventually get throughout the day as well, and are rewarded with compliments from Mr. Hurricane as well as the achievement for learning how to cook rice, unlocking Rice Rice Baby. Clara then also rings us to let us know that a competition is right around the corner, and it's an important one, the annual food truck championship, and Clara wants us to become a local legend as once our dad did. And it turns out that Clara is actually hosting the whole event, so sod it, we know people and we have that going for us I guess. But to enter, we need an entry fee of $2,000, which is nuts to be honest, but we also have to get to prestige level 4 to qualify for it. So now we have to carry on doing what we do best to grind ourselves to a competition standard, which is fine by me. And when we travel to another food spot, we unlock challenges. Now, each selling point we will go to will have three tiers of challenges that we need to complete to master that location. For bronze, we need to do one challenge, silver two, and gold three. And we have to complete every challenge in a tier in one sitting. And for achievements, we need to reach gold on every selling spot, so we get to work. Our first bronze challenge had us earn $50 in a minute from orders, and since we're making expensive sushi, we completed it easily. And of course, bronze challenges are always easy as hell to be honest, but the challenges can range from earning a certain amount of tips, making food with no mistakes, and even speedily serving your customers, but we can talk more about the challenges later when we tackle them properly. For now, I decided to tackle some of the extra jobs again for some easy money, and I realised we could get another achievement, so with Clara's delivery mission we unlocked an achievement for completing it with 30 seconds to spare. Well, there is actually another for completing it with under 5 seconds left on the clock. Tense, but doable. We pull up early, and we simply wait. When it hits 5 seconds, we complete the delivery and unlock the achievement life on the edge. Now, there isn't that much to say right now, if I'm honest, as all we're doing is going from place to place selling and cooking food. And since there isn't really much to talk about here, all I can really do is talk about the achievements we got whilst on our way to the journey for our competition. The next we got was for finally running over 100 150 people for the last splat related achievement, hilariously unlocking our fresh meat. The best thing about this achievement as well is that whenever you leave the garage, these three people always spawn in the same location, so they are a very easy triple kill. So we ran over these three a lot. Also during our next selling point, we also sold some luxury fries and they must have been pretty special, as they allowed us to get to prestige 4 and unlock the superstar achievement as well. So now we only need the two grand and the competition is ours. After that was done, we went to go pick up some petrol and on the way unlock yet another achievement for driving 50 kilometers in the truck for our behind the wheel. When we get to the petrol station, we fill up the beast and you'll never guess what. We unlocked another achievement for putting 500 gallons of fuel in the truck, unlocking beast needs to eat. Now, something that I didn't mention earlier was the fact that by completing the gas station jobs that Joe has for you, you can actually unlock fast travel points with every completion, so that outside of your work, you can quick travel to the various petrol stations across the map. And by unlocking the final one by doing yet another phenomenal cleaning job, we unlock the achievement hard work pays off. 
And honestly, folks, even though the game is once again spitting achievements at us left, right, and center, they do take a little bit of time to earn, which is great. Because with Gas Station Simulator, simply breathing unlocks you an achievement. So even though we're still earning them rather rapidly, you do have to earn them, which I really enjoyed. And we also earned our next achievement for saving 100 customers, unlocking round anniversary. But enough messing around now. You folks no doubt want to see the competition. And by getting the $2,000 that we needed, we're ready to crack on and win this damn thing. We rock up to the stadium and we go to enter. When we do, we also have to pick the type of food that we want to cook for the competition. We, of course, pick burger and fries as they're some of the easiest foods to make and we've been doing them the longest. So I already knew the routine of making fast food there. But the truck competition has started and it turns out we're friends with all of the judges. So I guess that is actually a pretty great plus. And you'll also notice some familiar dancing aliens and dinosaurs around the tent as well. Now our competition is against Dennis and another unnamed loser. But first we have to learn the rules for the competition. We first must use a tablet in order to order the food that we need and the first time we get to use it it's completely free but if we use it again during the competition itself we will lose 50 points and we get a point for every dollar that we earn so we need to sell fast and right to make as much money as we can it's simple and we can do it i throw all of the burger and fries ingredients into the fridge and get straight to work dennis takes a surprising early lead but we let him have it as once the burners get going and the customers start appearing we soon blitz our way through the orders expertly Burgers and fries of all descriptions are throwing themselves out of the food truck and slowly but surely we catch up and make it past Dennis. Even though I did lose 50 points for having to order some food that I forgot. And honestly I was so involved with this I didn't even realise that time was going so fast. And before I knew it the job was done. We had won. We unlocked the champion achievement as well as being able to stand on number one above Dennis and to laugh in his stupid arsonist face. How he isn't arrested and in prison I don't know but beating him gave me great satisfaction. In the next cut scene we reopen dad's food truck journal and unlock another achievement for selling food on every spot once for strider but we then talk to our dead dad and say we hope that he's proud of us but we've done it it's time to carry on and start making food for myself and technically this is the end of the campaign so we also unlock every story has an end now it's time to pick the last couple of miscellaneous achievements up before we crack down on the golden stars for every location the first we complete is for finding all of the collectibles scattered around the map these are always in hard to reach places but unlock you new upgrades to the van whether it be new colors or new wheels and mirrors and that sort of thing it took us a good hour because at the time there wasn't a guide for it at all but we eventually found the last hiding in the shipping yard and grabbed it for last but not least Whilst trying to complete the challenges as well on the beach, we also unlocked a couple more cell-related achievements. The first was for earning a total of $2,500 from food sales alone, unlocking us businessmen. And then moments later, we also earned $500 from tips alone and unlocked the next achievement, Tips Master. Now for the beach gold challenge. We had to earn $30 in 10 minutes from tips alone, complete eight orders in a row as fast as we could, and also serve five sushi in seven minutes. So definitely some of the trickier of the challenges, but that didn't slow us down. We threw pizza into the boxes and sushi into the bags and slowly started to complete the challenges. And remember, we have to do them all in one sitting, but that wasn't a problem for us. As with one last pizza flung at the customer, we completed the gold challenge and unlocked the gold windshield for the van. No achievement for it though, surprisingly, but that's one down, seven more spots to go. The next spot we went to was the shipyard, and while smashing the challenges with ease, since this is one of the easier selling spots. We also unlocked the fifth and final prestige that we needed. We finally reached level five and unlocked the achievement West Side Port King. And a mere moment later, we also unlocked the gold badge for this location as well, unlocking us some fancy black paint. Now, since we had also reached prestige level five, it means that we can unlock the final upgrades to the cooking appliances for the van. For most of them, it's either more room in the fridge or more room to cook stuff, so you don't really have to wait. But by buying all of the upgrades for the truck, we unlocked the real deal and we we're really getting close now, folks. But now, this is where I hit an absolute revelation when it came to tackling the challenges. Now, even though food decays and eventually goes bad, it takes quite a while for it to happen, especially whilst you're cooking. So what I started to do was going to the selling spots a good 10 hours before the rush hour and pre-cooking everything that I needed. Having 15 burgers ready as well as 20 portion of chips, we can no doubt smash as the food apparently stays hot and fresh for the entire day, making sure that we can serve people immediately. So this was the new standard to which I could make sure I can smash my way through the badges. Just please don't call the health and safety department, please, I have a family. 
But slowly and surely, it was working, and we started to rapidly unlock the gold star badges for each section. But before we finish them all, I still need a couple more miscellaneous achievements, so we'll do those first. The next was for completing 25 scythe jobs for either Clara, Joe, or Luciano. Now, Luciano's was a full day's work, so I just cycled between Clara and Joe's until we hit the glorious 25th one and unlocked Legendary Employee. But after all of this, we were down to our last golden selling spot, and the only achievement that I was worried about was for that of serving 300 customers. Now, with our new speedy method of service as well, I was doing a lot of fries. I knew we was getting close, but since the game doesn't actually give you a specific number that you're on, it's always kind of a guessing game. But thankfully, on the last selling spot, we finally served our 300th customer and unlocked Lord of the Mob. And after getting bronze and silver badges on the last selling spot as well, we also unlocked one for each. So with only one challenge left, we got to work one last time, and thankfully we got some really easy challenges for the last gold. Earn money and save quick, that was pretty much it. With our new method, this was easy as hell, and within five minutes we had completed the last challenge, so we threw ourselves back into the driver's seat and unlocked Master and Commander. Now honestly, this achievement was a little bit tough as it is quite a grind having to do every single location. But with some careful planning and a couple of loopholes, it is certainly doable. And even though it was a little bit of a grind, it's nothing compared to the nightmare that was to get to level 10 in Gas Station Simulator. My lord, that still gives me nightmares. However, with 49 out of 50 achievements got, it's time for a very simple one to end with. Now, back at the start of the game when Dennis sets your garage on fire and you can go to take your revenge, you get an achievement for stealing his money. However, there's also an achievement for not stealing his money. So we decided to reload a save and leave the $500 with him. We still go through the process of breaking into the safe so that he knows we could have taken it, just to intimidate him I guess, but we sprint away pennilessly and unlock Honesty Pays. And with that, we are the master of the food truck business, we have tons of money and trophies, and of course, the grind is over. Now, honestly, going into Food Truck Simulator, I had heard quite bad things about this game. It really seemed like a little bit of a mixed bag from those who had already played it. But honestly, once again, I love this game. It's silly, it's fun, and it's quite surprisingly in-depth. And that's all I need from these simulator games. Now, I will admit that the humour had been dialed down compared to Gas Station Simulator, and there wasn't as much batshit crazy moments or bugs that we could really laugh at. So, I definitely was missing a little bit of that. But it was still a really nice, polished little game that I would suggest you give a go. And this is why I also don't like reading the reviews, because a lot of the time, I don't agree. And this is definitely the case here, as if I had listened to them, I may not have even bought this game. But I'm so glad that I did, and I'm already looking forward to the next couple of games that Drago will be bringing out. It is well worth your time. But now, however, let's get to the stats. For Food Truck Simulator, it took us nearly 28 hours to grind all 50 achievements for the game. I'm going to be giving this game a very well-earned 7 out of 10, as it plays much cleaner than the first game, but I did want a little bit more wacky comedy that was missing. However, for a sim game, definitely one to enjoy. For difficulty for the achievements, I'm going to be giving this game a 3 out of 10, as nothing you really have to do is that challenging per se, just a little bit time consuming, however with the right prep and planning, you'll have no trouble getting to the 100% on this one. For the hardest achievement as well, I'm going to be giving it to Master and Commander, as this is without question the grindiest and most time consuming one in the roster. However, again, it wasn't honestly that bad at all. And that's it, Food Truck Simulator was a fantastic game and definitely one I would recommend to those who enjoy these kinds of games. However, for next Sunday, make sure you subscribe as we tackle another long awaited sequel, The Evil Within 2. In this game, we once again play as Sebastian as we delve into STEM once again, looking for our missing daughter. But how will this game compare to the first? First. Well, you'll have to tune in next week to find out in our first part of the Evil Within 2 journey. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And folks, again, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it more than you could possibly know. But also make sure to swing by my Twitch as well, where we go through the achievements grind live. It would be amazing to have you. But I have talked for far too long today. So once again, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you all next Sunday. Take care. Bye bye for now. <laughs>